Hello everyone. Uh, this time around I have something a little bit different. I have a math problem. Now, why I picked this problem to do a video on is, well, it came up on a banner ad on a website of all places when I was looking for some other stuff. And I thought, wow, this has square roots in it and addition under a square root sign. And I thought, you know what, I can solve this. So I took a swipe at it and I went wrong. And then I took another swipe at it and I went wrong again. And I took another swipe at it and I went wrong again, all down to elementary errors in algebra or arithmetic. But eventually I worked out that there were at least two possible ways to arrive at a solution. One is the just brute force your way through solving this as it is. Uh, and I'll go through steps for that in a moment. And then another way is to use a couple of observations about the equation to, to come at it from a simpler uh, angle, which involves a lot less complicated algebra and arithmetic. So anyway, uh, here's the, the first solution I did that worked, and that was the complex, <clears throat> let's just work this through. So I thought, I need to get rid of the square roots, but I've got a sum of square roots there, and that means that I need to get 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 it down so I have only one square root on uh, anywhere in the, uh, the equation so that I can square it and get rid of it. Now, how can we get rid of this, this square, any square roots in this sum of square roots? Well, we could try squaring both sides. And uh, this will uh, give us a, when we square the square 15, we get a number obviously, but if we square the other side, we will be down to a single square root uh, uh, setup. So here's what you get when you square the, uh, the the sum here uh, you get uh, you get two terms which are the square root squared so those will just turn into the contents of the square root sign uh, and then the uh, then you see in the middle here you have uh, a, uh, a product of square roots, which is really, I could distribute that out and put it under a single square root sign, but I'm not going to, it, it's not necessary here. Uh, so if we do some uh, simplification here, uh, we have two x's, so we get two x, and we add it to the square root term and then we can subtract the 15, and that means this whole thing comes down to this. And you'll note we have a common factor of two, so if we take that out, we get this setup. Now we can move the, the lone x over to the other side, and that gives us the square root setup is equal to some value. Now, uh, now we, we're down to having a square root equals something. And again, to get rid of the square root sign, we want to square it. And this means that we have, that the, uh, we have to multiply out the uh, binomial on the right. Uh, and so that gives us, uh, when you square, a pro, you know, a square roots, uh, the square root sign goes away. But you got to make sure you keep your parentheses there because uh, uh, you know, you, if you square a product, then each factor in the product gets squared. Uh, and then you see that our x, uh, x is on, on one side, have no square root anymore. And if you look at it, you can see that it's, it's actually, uh, we have an x squared plus 15x on one side and 11,025 minus 210 times x plus x squared. Now this looks like a quadratic form or, or equation, but when you do some, but if you take a look, x, the x squareds subtract out. That gives us 225x 
is equal to 11,025 when we collect the x's uh, on one side and the constant on the other. And then when you're done with this, uh, when you divide 11,025 by 225, you get 49. Now that means that x is 49. And if you plug it into the equation, uh, you'll get x plus 15 for the first square root sign, which is uh, uh, 64 which is a perfect square, and you take the square root of that, you get eight. And then obviously the square root of 49, also a perfect square, is seven. So if you add eight and seven, you get 15. Now this algebra here, we haven't done any operation that yields multiple possible results. So we haven't taken a square root, we've undone square roots. So that means that there's nothing here that uh, should cause uh, multiple solutions to show up. Now, this is a complex set of steps here and involves some fairly large numbers and uh, multiplying out, uh, you know, like squaring a bi two binomials, uh, and it, it gets to be a little bit messy and it's really easy to go wrong. Now, the other way we can, we can do this is we can use an observation we know that x plus 15 and, uh, and x must be squares. Uh, that is, that you must be able to take a square root of them. So, uh, and that they must differ by 15 because of the plus 15 under the one square root sign. It, and we know that the square roots themselves add up to 15. Now we could try just guessing, but that would leave us wondering if we hadn't done the previous bit of work, if, there, if what we find is a unique solution or if we might find others. So using this observation, uh, we can rewrite the equation to something a little bit easier to mess with. So we'll, we'll set b equal to the square root of x, that's the smaller of the two squares and a equal to the square root of x plus 15 which is the larger of the two squares. That means we can rewrite the original equation as a plus b equals 15 and from the previous observation we know that a squared less b squared must also be 15 because the difference between the squares is 15. Now you can solve, you can work that out um, uh, by uh, figuring, figuring out uh, a whole bunch of stuff, but the observation itself allows us to skip complicated algebra. Now, that means uh, that we can factor the a squared minus b squared. Uh, it's a difference of squares, that means that the factors are a plus b and a minus b. And then of course that has to equal 15. Now, we know something from our original equation, that a plus b is 15, so we can replace that. So now we have 15 times the a minus b is equal to 15. Now we've got the common factor of 15 on both sides, we can divide by 15, and now we have a minus b equals 1. That means that our square roots have to differ by one. That means, and now we can solve this here, is we have enough information to solve for b. And I'm gonna solve for b because we're looking for x. So, if, so now from this we know that a is b plus one. So if we substitute that into the a plus b equals 15 equation, we end up with b plus 1 plus b is 15, which is 2b equals 14, and that means b has to be equal to 7. Now, if you remember, we set b equal to, to the square root of x, which means 7 is the square root of x. Uh, and that means if we square, square both sides of that, we get x equals 49. And that means we've got the same result with this method, and I don't know about you, but this method looks a lot cleaner. 
Uh, even if you leave aside the fact that I've made a mess of the screen by putting stuff all over the place here. Uh, a couple of lines on the screen might be beneficial here. But it's, uh, it's clearly a, a simpler, smaller numbers, and less places to go wrong. Uh, now, if you aren't convinced that a squared minus b squared is the same as a plus b uh, times a minus b, you can just multiply it out, distribute it out, and uh, you'll come up with uh, a squared plus ab minus ab plus b squared. And you'll see that the ab's will cancel out, and that gives you a squared minus b squared. Oh, pardon me, um, that's minus b squared, not plus b squared. Um, because minus b times b is minus b squared. So, uh, this, uh, this should uh, go to uh, show you that there's not always just one way to arrive at the solution to an equation. And that's what actually made me want to make this particular video. So uh, it, the banner ad actually showed this equation with uh, what's x, uh, or find x. So we've used two different methods of finding x. We've used the straight algebraic way with no, uh, no fancy substitutions or anything like that. We just worked on the the equation directly and you'll see that came up with a single unique solution and then we also used a couple of, of obs an observation and a well-known fact to uh, simplify the work and arrived at the same answer a different way uh, and that is a you know, if you know of different ways to do the same problem, that's a good way to check your work uh, to make sure you haven't made an error. Because you're, if you're using two different methods, you're unlikely to make the same error or, or an error in both of them that gives you to the same leads you to the same wrong answer. Uh, now, uh, you can also with something like this, you can just put your solution back in for uh, for x and see if you get a true equation when you calculate it out, which we do, as I noted after the first part. Uh, so obviously 49 plus 15 is 64, square root of that's eight, and the uh, square root of 49 is seven, add the two, you get 15. Uh, now obviously you could take the negative square root of either one of those, and those won't give you 15. But there is a solution to this with the positive square roots that does give you 15. Now there's a couple other uh, um, values you could make this equal to and probably get a true result, uh, or you should be able to get a true result and solve it. Uh, you, you could could set it to minus 15 uh, and uh, I think 1 or minus 1. Um, I haven't worked through the, the math on those uh, to see if either method actually works, but I don't see why it shouldn't. Uh, so if if you're incl so inclined, uh, give it a try yourself uh, with either of the methods and see what you come up with by changing the 15 on the right hand side uh, to minus 15 or minus one or plus one, and and see what you get. Uh, you may have to take into account the negatives negative square roots. Um, but there you have it. Another thing that you might try is see, can this, does this hold for any, uh, can you find a solution for anything, any other value than 15 uh, for the uh, right hand side? And it'd be interesting to see that. So if, if you're, uh, you're so inclined, give it a work through and see what you come up with. 
But anyway, uh, this is just a nice, uh, simple uh, math uh, video. Uh, so I'm going to leave it here. There's really not much to say. It's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, I do apologize for the clutter on the uh, screen for for uh, for some of this. Um, I don't have nice software for doing math stuff like the like some of the uh, people doing this stuff, and I didn't have a spot to set up the brown paper I used previously uh, for uh, similar um, videos. Anyway. Uh, that's all for this time. If you liked the video or you didn't, leave a like or a dislike. Uh, it won't hurt my feelings either way. Uh, if you want to be notified of future videos, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. And if you've watched this far, thanks for watching.